we want to be in a relationship with somebody else so bad. We want to love somebody else so badly, be with somebody else, be you know in someone else's company, but we don't even want to be by ourselves. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's Simply Nicole, passionately promoting positivity. And I hope you guys are doing well. And I just wanted to touch on something. So a couple weeks ago, I made an infographic for my Instagram and it talks about self-love and how to achieve self-love. And I just wanted to talk about a couple of the things that I mentioned in the post. Basically, you guys, I have studied this and I have done this myself. I have taken courses on this and basically I just felt the need to spread that light to the world and you know to the people that follow me and I just took the three best points from everything that I've learned about self-love and put them into an infographic I want to just touch on those three things and elaborate on them a little bit because guys I think that self-love is the root of what can change everyone's life. If you love yourself, you know your worth and you know to change your life. You know that your dreams are possible. It just starts with self-love. Self-love won't cure everything. You'll still have self-doubt. You'll still have negative thoughts. You'll still have insecurities, but you need self-love. You need self-love because you don't want to portray desperation when it comes to relationships and friendships. You don't want to be always needing someone else and relying on someone else because you know relying on someone else for love because you didn't have it yourself or because where it was supposed to be given to you in your childhood or in your past life it wasn't given to you you were lacking in that area so you have to fix that you have to heal that and learn to love yourself despite the areas that you lacked it in so that you're not going out into the world and seeking it from other people because you don't know you know where those people are in their lives and you don't know they have your best interests at heart so self-love basically protects us and it's extremely important i say god is love the universe is love what we were created by is love you know somebody had to love us to create us so why not love yourself love is patient love is kind love does it does not envy it does not keep any record of wrongs and i had this written on my mirror once and I just I just decided to treat myself that way to to you know be conscious and aware of how I'm feeling and make sure I'm treating myself with love I was patient with myself I was kind with myself I spoke to myself kindly if I felt as though I was becoming envious of something I didn't allow that emotion to enter my life I mean, if I were to become envious of something you know I acknowledge that and I turn it around and I understand exactly how to turn that around and to say, Nicole, there's no reason for you to be jealous or envious of anybody, anybody, anybody that's doing well. Not about it's not about them doing better than me. Anybody that's doing well, period. You're doing well. And that's great. And, you know, I hope that everyone gets what's coming for them. Here's the post, you guys. Three steps to achieving self-love. I have seek growth. OK, seek growth. I'm glad I put this first because. You know, how do I explain seeking growth tremendously? Like in these past six months, I've grown so much. And how do you seek growth? Here's the thing. What I, it's easy. All you have to do is every day, it has to be every day. You, you try to improve something about yourself, whether that's mental, physical, spiritual, or all three. So mentally, you read something every day. Mentally, you watch an educational youtube video every day learning about anything it doesn't matter what it is but that trust me that's growth um physically you exercise every day you do a wall sit every day you do squats every day you do jumping jacks every day spiritually you read a bible verse every day you uh annotate a scripture of the bible every day you have to grow every day you have to grow if you grow if you don't grow then everything around you doesn't grow it stays stagnant so if you stay stagnant in your life personally what you're doing externally your life will remain stagnant the people in your life will remain stagnant <laughs> if you okay you may think that the people in your life you know that are your direct friends may be the people that's supposed to be for you but trust me you should be evolving you should be changing you should be you should be changing no shade but you know to, to you and your friends but you have to be constantly elevating if those friends are elevating with you and are pushing you to elevate then that's different but you have to be if you start to change yourself and to grow internally your external surroundings should change 
And when you're so focused on growing yourself, you're not worried about so much, you know, who's coming in and who's coming out because you know that it's for the better because you're doing your work. You're doing the internal work. Growth. So important. Uh, so important. Like, what would you do without growth? Staying inspired. Yeah, staying inspired is another way to, um, another way to gain self-love. Like I said, you know, in this world, there is a lot of negativity. There's a lot of pessimism. There's a lot of people that are doubting themselves, that don't believe in themselves, and that leads them to just doubt the ones around them. And they put that same energy back into the world that they believe in themselves, and it just comes back to them. And, you know, if you're, if you exude positivity, if you, you know, are taking in positivity and putting that back out into the world, you will bring that back into your life. It's all about keeping a positive mindset and a positive circle around your life. Keep that recycling in and out of your life and it'll, it'll work. It will work. And then lastly, uh, cherishing alone time. I don't know why, but I have felt as though there has been a negative stigma around being alone. You'll see on social media sometimes. Maybe this is just maybe I'm making this up, but it's just almost as though if you're by yourself, you, you are, you know, you're looked as to be less than because you don't have a significant other or you're not constantly surrounded by friends. And there's nothing wrong with being alone. That's when the, the best things can happen to you. That's when you can grow the most. That's when you can learn the most about yourself. That's when you do learn the most about yourself. And, you know, so many times we want to be in relationships, but we don't even, we're, we, we want to be in a relationship with somebody else so bad. We want to love somebody else so badly, be with somebody else, be you know, in someone else's company, but we don't even want to be by ourselves. And it's important to learn how to be by yourself. Even if you don't enjoy being alone, you know, I, I can be an extrovert sometimes or I like to be around other people. But when I'm alone, I don't let that get me down. I don't focus on the fact that I'm alone. I focused on, OK, I'm alone. I have a lot of time right now because I'm, my time's not being taken up by anyone else right now. What can I do to make myself better? That should always be what you're asking yourself, especially if you're alone. What can you do to make yourself better? What can you do to make the best of this moment? So yes. I've been alone for a while and if you've been alone for a while, I hope that you've been learning a lot about yourself because you, you now know the most about yourself. And personally, I think the people that know most about themselves, we're a little bit ahead. We're, we're one step ahead, okay? Because we're, you know, we're a little bit more conscious of, of, of what's going on because we know where we are. You can always tell you guys when someone is, I know we all battle things, but you can tell when someone is literally just you know their problems are right on their shoulders i can see it because people that are just at peace you know this peace this sense of peace that that you know people have comes from being alone and and working on their problems and their pain and their weak points and loving themselves but people that try to numb the pain forget about the pain distract themselves with other things sweep it under the rug even though it's still there you can tell you can tell by the way people some people will talk or um by the way they act you can tell when someone's a little weak or shy or insecure you can tell when someone has something that they are conscious about uh, self-conscious about and you know they're not as comfortable and as at peace with themselves and i used to be like that but i took time to understand who i am and what i want in life and what is stopping me from getting there and what makes me insecure, what makes me less confident. And I worked on those and I worked on them in ways that you wouldn't think. You wouldn't think something like journaling helped me uh, become more confident. You wouldn't think that, but it did. So those are guys, just a couple things I want to touch on when it comes to self-love. We all should be working towards this. Okay. I don't care if you're a female or a male work towards self-love. It's necessary. It just, it just is necessary. And it'll make you a, a much better person. And I hope that I, I hope, and that's what I want all of you all to be. So thank you guys for watching. And I hope I was able to touch you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one.